the user. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. We are gathered here at the Square of Greatness. Uh, just kidogo, just a minute. Let me mute the microphone. And uh, we have our guest tonight, Wahiga Maura. Welcome so much, and uh, welcome, welcome, and thank you for availing yourselves. Thank you, everyone, for coming to the masterclass training where we just come to build capacity we come to grow and we come to share have a great time and yes today we have our guest wahiga maura he's here with us and before we begin i think we shall begin with a word of prayer from uh who will pray for us today who will pray for us today a volunteer please pray for us today any person hello ben, ben, I'm, I'm going to pray for you today ah great hello. Pray for us, bro. Okay, 
tiles for athletes. Mm, Father, in the, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray to you today. As we go to start our session in building our capacity and master speech training, we pray that you're going to be with us, you're going to guide, to guide us. Even this. Speaker who is coming to train us or to guide us through, we pray that the Holy Spirit came through. We pray that in Jesus Christ, I pray and believe. Amen, 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 amen. Maze, thank you so much for coming. I'll request Wahiga. I guess it's a video to Mwane. Tuone apa Wahiga. Leo atulete news. Let me go to the story. We just come here to gather capacity. Welcome, Wahiga. How are you doing? Hi, everyone. Fine, thank you. I don't know if you can see Hi. me. Ah, we can see you. Nice one, nice one, nice one, nice one. Looking strong, sharp. And uh, great as always, Mazi. Welcome, welcome, Mazi. Uh, thank you, thank I, you. I can begin with that with a, just a short story uh, about Wahiga and I. How I met Wahiga. <laughs> um, Wahiga, Wahiga. Everyone knows Wahiga here. He's a news anchor, a citizen, prime time, prime time. Nile sa inyo atu ingi ono na news. Kwaale ambao kingereza kidogo, hao kwa mishika pale kidogo, prime time is that time like 9pm, 7pm, that's prime time. Uh, Wahige is also a moderator, he's a minister of the gospel. Actually many people don't know that side of him. And he's also a very great person who has pushed several, uh, several, several, several uh, narratives in Kenya that have brought change. And he's a man who we admire as a generation. So I always wanted to meet Wahiga. I texted him on WhatsApp some times back, but he got held up so much. Then by God's grace, one day I was just walking in a meeting and then I saw him seated in the arena, Akipiga Simu. And I waited for him to finish the phone call and I approached him and we had a great time. We talked and we connected. And here he's now, uh, he's here with us and I'm happy that you have just come here to build capacity. So Wahiga, this is the masterclass. Uh, we welcome you to this family. We have a small family of young people, both on YouTube. There are guys who are joining us on YouTube and also here on Google Meet, where we just gather every Saturday to perfect our public speaking skills, to perfect our 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 mastery of speech, and to make sure that we keep on driving conversations. Why did we start this, Wahiga? Maybe I can just tell you so that you get to understand where all this is coming from. We realized that Martin Luther King was just one man in his generation. Just one man, and he brought a very, very huge change. Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, Jesus Christ. And realized all these people used their oratory skills, apart from other dynamics. Their oratory skills were, were, were very, very effective in terms of them pushing conversations. So we thought, what if in Kenya, we can have guys who are powerful orators, and they are very effective in media, in corporate, in ministry, in science, in politics, and in many spheres. What is the thing that we could bring in our society and we thought how can we do this by training guys every day because we keep on complaining but you don't train anyone so welcome Wahiga once again welcome thank you thank you nice so our topic for today was articulation of words and mastery of speech given the fact that most of the time we've seen you on the screens we've seen you speak i've also seen you moderating several events i've also seen you address various issues as a minister of the gospel, at least once or twice per week, you'll find yourself speaking somewhere, Wahiga. Was Wahiga born this way? Were you born speaking good grammar, flowing, having an effect? Tell us about your childhood, Wahiga. Good. Uh, Benny, uh, Benny Hinn, man of God, yes. Walubengo, thank you so much for this <laughs> opportunity. Um, and let me welcome everyone, all 56 of you. So I'm amazed that there are 56 people online at this hour. Uh, I feel really honored. Maybe just to introduce myself once again, my name is Wahiga Mwaura. I'm a, a follower of Jesus Christ, first and foremost. I am a journalist, um, a news anchor, Citizen TV, and a special projects editor. And it's an honor to be here. Uh, I think I want to applaud Benny Hinn because he followed me uh, when I was running away from him. And uh, <laughs> uh, be able to be a part of this forum. So I, I want to appreciate you and the organizers of this forum for this opportunity. Um, my childhood, I would say, was very different from who I am right now. And 
Whereas I believe it's good for a child to understand their purpose early, it doesn't happen for everyone. I never thought I would be in the media when I was younger. I, I was a noisemaker. That is, uh, that is uh, something I can't turn away from. I remember in Standard 1, Standard 2, I would always be as part of the list of those who are caught making noise or causing a havoc in class and that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, um, but I can say the ability to express myself could be a couple of factors. One, uh, I think good or rhetorical skills can, can be inherited and it, it helps that uh, my parents are lawyers. So maybe I got it from them to begin with, but I did not know. Again, some of you might have talents that are hidden. And until you get to an opportunity or a platform that can expose them, you may never know. But through my high school, if you speak to the ones I went to high school with, they won't say that I was the one going to be a news anchor. Uh, in fact, I had the privilege of going to school with a, a girl called Anki Guta. And Anki Guta was in the drama school. Anki Guta, the news anchor. She was in drama. She was singing. She was in choir. So if you had told people that she was going to be in the news, they would not have been surprised. But for me, my close friends will tell you, I had no indication in high school. It, in fact, it is in university that my uh, oratorical gift began to show itself. And I remember I was doing a, a, um, a degree in computer science and I would always be picked as the one to make the presentation. I've never forgotten one lecturer once said, when Wahiga presents, even if he does not understand the content, there is a way he delivers it that you are convinced to give the group high marks. So for one of you who are sitting here who desire to do something you are with an interest and you feel you don't have it yet, let me tell you something. Human beings can adapt. If you desire something and it is God's will and you push yourself towards it, you have no idea how great you can be in that. Even if you had no idea that uh, that, that is possible. So let me encourage you. Me, I was a late bloomer uh, and, and uh, I'm still, people are still amazed that I'm in media, especially those who knew me when I was younger. Let me, let me wait for Benny to say something. Wow. Wow, wow. No, no, because you are noise making, maze to relate vibaya. You know, I remember I used to be written in noise makers, maze atas kwenye siko shule. And I remember asking a prefect, mbono meniandika na siko wa niliko mgonzo, wakaniambia, ato wepe nyo likuwa likuwa napigia kelele. So, <laughs> so I can relate that part where, wanasema, jamal likuwa napigia kelele. And you know, kitambo likuwa naandiko noise makers, sayi wana, wana kulipa ndi wawe. So, <laughs> we can see the contracts and, 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 and everything. So now, you, you, it was not an expectation. Wahika just finds himself in media, and there you are now. You're the man who is defining all odds. And I can, I can, I can say from the way I see you driving conversations, even interviewing people on, on media, it's very, very articulate. When you want to lose a swali, you use pathos. Pathos is the connection of, 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 of emotions. Logos is logic and ethos is ethics. Now, no longer have you not up on a mind game on all these. i so. Are you trying to tell us that uh, you don't agree with the BBI narrative? I love on a pause, you know. So, no longer have you not chosen a zone chess on a sema ah, Ujamani Atari. So, now, Wahika was there that defining moment in life. When you told it to a speech, now, gonna was your make up. I'm gonna say I'm gonna standing ovation. Now, can join me, Mimi, Mine Zabonga, me, ah, Mine Zabonga, Mazi, Mini Mnoma. Kunaka moment come, I come. I mean, I think there have been several defining moments, but uh, the, the earliest one I remember that really made me think about taking this media seriously, Ilikwaile uh, Wakati, I think, what year was that? Neza Kumbuka Kweli. I was a youth, what an Ijite two youth, although I'm still a youth now. <laughs> and I was, I was asked to moderate the church service. And let me tell you mm -hmm. something, uh, to those of you who are listening to this, sometimes the opportunities that come your way they are opportunities that will inconvenience you. They will they take your time, maybe they take your money in terms of your effort and everything else, and you wonder what is the value. So I remember there was a time our youth group were told uh, to lead the main service for one month. Now I say wakamua means you takwa MC. Nakumbuka I'd never really seen it before. Okay, I used to sing in the choir once in a while, but I'd never really seen it before. So I did the first Sunday. Wase wakasema, 
ah ilikuwa poa ilikuwa poa lakini hawakunishangilia sana then i did the second sunday and you know i had gotten a few more jokes ndio kwa nimeongeza masikizi hivi hivi wase wakapiga makofi hey, this guy this guy is getting better by the time we got to the fourth sunday people were really even reminding me unakumbuka ile kitu ulisema last time mase ni kweli were looking forward to to be speaking so it was not that i stood somewhere like martin luther king and delivered a powerful speech no it was moderate in my church i must have been about 24 years 23 20 i'll give you a youth by then the one man that was there 23 24 but mm-hmm. by the time to limaliza the fourth sunday wase wengi walikama wa kaniambia by the way is the way you speak on stage i think you you're a really good speaker and it was around that same time that a pastor called Matthew Kelly I've never forgotten his name he came to me and asked me what did you study in school again i told him bia you are in the wrong profession you should go into media that is where your talent is and that is where you will find success na akanisukuma he kept him by the he reminded me several times over a period of about one year before one day i then got angry and i said you know what since you pass here sana let me try this thing while I'm, before i have family before anything else what's an ismame hapo kwanza so Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. Yeah, maybe we I'm can not... keep our cameras off so that we we allow bandwidth. Nice. So, uh I I I I I think this one this this the, the, the session is getting hotter and uh you you're also opening my mind that there's always a possibility in life that a small this this one of the people i listen to is kuvusi tembeko i don't know if you know him or either i've attended i've attended a forum uh when he once came to nairobi to speak wow so i have been i'm an ardent follower of vusi and vusi keeps on saying Very well that every opportunity of africa mm. yes every opportunity every year every stage is a chance for you to climb on the staircase of greatness and so you are, you are just asserting that fact and i'm seeing a hundred people have already joined on google meet to share and even on your own youtube guys have already joined wow. and one thing that you're communicating wow. to our generation is that every small opportunity it can be in church it can be at the workplace it can be anywhere it's something so like wasa wengi wanasemanga mzee kitu what's the benefit sometimes i remember i was being called for opportunities to go and speak and I'm okay and I'm not paid anything but then after that I'm realized I'm I'm realizing hey, kumbe, I'm building capacity internally and so to our my generation we can see that Wahiga is communicating one thing that always give yourself an opportunity to do something and by giving yourself that opportunity to do something you will grow into a great person so now next question Wahiga so after this defining moment then you realized okay i'm gifted now in a certain path like i'm gifted as as a as someone in the media i can also be gifted in terms of speaking did you start reading books or did you start also listening to people how did you start now building muscles for the opportunity that you had that's a very good question i, I like the way you're phrasing things and and let me applaud you benny you know how old are you again just remind me I am I'm 19 years old Wahiga. I'm turning 20 in December. Man, I don't know what I was doing when I was 19. I wish I was uh, doing the things you are doing. I think maybe I'd, I'd be a, a secretary general right now of a, a UN body. Um but nevertheless, uh, I knew I was a good speaker after uh, you know that moment of revelation. But I did not think I was a good media personality yet, you know. Remember I've come from a completely different backdrop of IT you know I was thinking I'm meant to be a computer scientist at some point an engineer and that sort of thing so here's this place where I think okay I'm a good speaker where do people make money you know with that practice and though that was before 
Twitter and Instagram and all these things now where people are doing online vlogs and that, that, that sort of thing. That was a little bit earlier than that. I think those days we were dealing with a, a platform called High Fives. So you know, up on a tambour High Five. It may have been uh, there before some of you uh, were born or started using the computers. But nevertheless, what I started doing was I have a vision now that media might be a space that can work for me. But remember, I haven't gone to school as a journalist. I'm trained in something different. And also, I still have low self-esteem about my ability to be impactful in that field. So I decided to do a couple of things. One, I started doing a lot of research. I, I thank God I had a few friends who were in the media. I would sit with them. I would interview them. I would understand what the space is all about. Secondly, I started visiting uh, a lot of places where there were adverts for uh, productions, plays, because I used to think even if I can't get into the media as a news anchor, maybe I can be an actor. And maybe that is something that I will enjoy. So I was always at Kenya National Theatre. I was always at Alliance Francaise uh, and, and anywhere else where I would hear that Kuna auditions, Kuna Kamaizo, that's where I would go to. And with time, I said, knowing who is who in that sector, you know, I would listen to radio stations. They would say, sometimes we have auditions here, come. And I would, you know, every time I meet someone, I take their number. The same way you took my number, Benihim. And uh, I'm always saying if the opportunities, you know, text me and that sort of thing. And so I put in place a series of events that would help me to be, uh, what's the word, to better understand this field that I want to get into, to learn, to, 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 to uh, grasp, and, and it, 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 your networks are very important, you know. And that's why sometimes even when you take some of these free gigs, it's horrible because you do a lot of work and nobody pays you, but you save someone's number at the end of the day. And, and you can be able to ask that person questions. And so for me, I made sure where there were media things, I would attend. Um, I would also, <laughs> coincidentally, uh, those days I think I had just had a phone with a, an OK camera. I would also read the news on my phone and record myself and see how I would get better. I remember putting up a, you know, a newspaper, I put it up there in front of me, and then I put the phone there, and then I'll read the paper to try and sound like a news anchor, maybe for radio, if not for radio, for TV, and that sort of thing. So I, I don't know what field the people who are listening to this call, Ben Heen, want to get into, but if you have understanding of that field early, you are at an, at an advantage. And so for me, I was looking for where are the advantages, you know, where are the advantages uh, that enable you to build capacity so that you are better placed than others when opportunity presents itself. Nice one, nice one, nice one. You know, you've just talked about something about success, that success has moments and event and seasons. You've talked about a series of events, you building networks and you trying to envision yourself. You, you just envisioned yourself. You saw it, you saw yourself in the screen and you started even acting as if you're in the screen. And I remember, maybe I can tell you a story also. I remember sometimes back, I used to watch you on TV and my sister is here, and I used to tell my sister, by the way, I'm not going And then my sister was like, Asas, it will be different from mass communication. And then I never managed to do mass communication. I'm studying IR and uh, political science. But I used to tell her, I'm going to be a And I'm going to be a wahiga, it will make sure after wahiga and after sasavusi. Kamambia na ndapatana na esharo. Na kama ni kuandika kitabu, itaenda ni mambia na mpea kitabu kama gift. And I envisioned it. Now, is there something about the power of envisioning? To some people who don't believe in God, they might say it's, it's envisioning. But for us Christians, we know it is faith. So tell me something about envisioning, Wahiga. Because it seems that your story is not something that you are born to be this. It's just by the grace of God. So is there a part where faith crossed your path? Apart from skills, tell us about that. Oh man, let me tell you, my whole journey has been a journey of faith. That's how I, I that's the only way I can I can describe it. And and I, I can't think of I can definitely think of moments when I spoke words or I thought thoughts that later on came to be. Okay. So I'll tell you, uh, mm -hmm. when I finished university, of course, you know, you could after kazi ni kazi. So I started the journey yes. of looking for a job which is another job. And I was a jobless. Okay, the good thing is when I left university, I found a job at a call center. Uh, although it was a very poor paying and they would take forever to pay us, they would pay us in installments. We shall live in installments. 
wako na 10k yako unalipwa 35 alafu after another few weeks unapata 45 alafu ndio utapata 25 hata hawezi jipanga so that was my first job mm-hmm. i worked there for about 8 months after that i was a job that applied for almost a year ago came through to work as a cashier at a bank at the same time when i was moderating in church so a couple of things were happening at the bank uh, i'll tell you a few things about the bank now they're even coming to my mind one and maybe that's why god allowed me to work there people or working as citizen used to bank in that bank mm-hmm. okay which bank was it for some reason it was mm-hmm. the, it was a stand stand big stand big bank upper him mm-hmm. and so i would uh, see jimmy gathu coming in i would see another three or four but i remember especially jimmy gathu and i remember mm-hmm. jimmy would come in man and that time i'm the cashier he walks up to me he pay pesa he's talking casually to me man he would be in a nice multicolored shirt looking relaxed looking in in charge of his life and i would think man what does it feel like to be in that man's shoes you know this is jimmy gatu i don't know some of you are young jimmy gatu was on tv from 19 man he jimmy gatu has been the tv personality that i've grown up watching um, <laughs> and so i'm i'm there jimmy comes over and i chat with him and i used to chat with other clients and some of the clients would tell me you you are not supposed to be here you are too engaging you kazi yako unafaa kwa huko nje si hapa nyuma ya kanda that was one thing you know i think i i think god god is always sending us messages of where we are sometimes it's through other people it's through your experiences so when i'm at the bank remember i've been moderating in church the pastor has been telling me you should you should uh, get into media i realized that these people from rural media who come here maybe if i create a demo of what i can do I can give it to them and they can take it to their bosses. So I remember for some time I even created a, a voice demo. I gave it to some of the role media guys and be like please go and uh, and tell them that uh, there's this this guy who has a good voice, thinks he can do something. It never led to anything, but again I tried. And that's the thing about life, man. The moment you stop trying, you're pretty much you're almost dead even if you're young, okay? The third thing that happened, I remember one day, this one was most profound. We were working late it was a friday night about 7:30 and there was a Kiswahili citizen bulletin on tv and it was me and my supervisor and maybe one other person we decided to watch the news before we closed the bank and we go home okay and i remember as we were watching the news i told my supervisor one day i'm going to be sitting over there unaona pale kwa screen nitakuwa hapo the guy looked at me and said wewe Mm-mm. watu kama nyinyi ya mufikangi huko watu kama sisi ya tufikangi huko <laughs> this is the best we can get is what we have right now okay uh, and i i oh, it's like i told him one day you will see me behind that screen and do you know in the year 2009 when i first did the first show he texted me and he said kwani ulikuwa unajua ama vipi that was now uh, um, how many years after the maybe maybe five years from when we worked to was it five because i worked in the bank was, yeah about three, four years after we worked with him he couldn't believe it so there's something about the power of words uh, i remember there was a time when i would watch uh, a tv show and I'd, and and i would you know i would have cvs i've prepared my cvs i'm trying to get a job in the media all stations you know you're trying nation you're trying ktn kbc k24 family you name it and what you do is uh you okay uh i'm i'm having a problem with my connection just let me just fix it just give me a minute sorry sorry benny it's okay I'm, we are getting you this is your pleasure to not bigger story as we wait for higa as he works on his network uh tunaendelea kupiga story you know wahiga just talked about the power of faith and i'm finding it so profound 
do you know that there is a part in life where it's only faith that you remain? It's only just faith. You don't have any other thing. You only just have your faith and yourself. And even for me, finding this guy, it took faith. One of my mentors has joined, she's called Joy Kirin Juni. And uh, I remember when she started mentoring me from two, two three up with all. She took me one day to, to a mall, uh, specifically Garden City. And she asked me, which is the most expensive tie you've ever bought? I told her uh, the most expensive tie I bought is 150 shillings. And she took me to a shop and she bought me a tie at 1,500. Yeah, we can hear you to look at a story, Kikuza. And my mentor bought for me this tie and she told me about the power of faith. And so as Wahika is telling us about the power of faith, it's something I can relate with. Because at some point, you're there with your certificates at home, you don't have any other option, and the only thing you're remaining with is faith. So I'm just a young man, finished high school, I want to meet Higa. he is here today, it's called the power of faith. Let's go on. Sorry, I got interrupted there. Uh, um, uh, nice. And I'm trying to even remember where I was. But nevertheless, we were talking I about the power of faith. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I remember watching uh, 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 news programs and noting mm -hmm. the names that would come at the end of the news. Those days, they would even scroll the names of head of news, head of what. And I remember writing CVs with their names, not applying just general, saying just HR or anything. I remember even applying writing, they are Benihin Walub Walubengo, head of TV, look, this place, so and so. So I would watch all the stations. I would note the mm -hmm. names that come at the end of the bulletin and, and, and mm -hmm. I would then drop off letters to them, you know, across different media houses. I'm not saying, mm -hmm. again, different things could work for you. One of the things I always warn people is just because it worked for me, it might not work for you. And just because it didn't work for me, it might work for mm -hmm. you. You know, each of us, our paths are different. But uh, mm -hmm. I think you should be on a path to discover what works for you. You know, um, <laughs> some people, I'll give an example. I know people who really wanted to get into media. They got in, they realized they didn't like it, and they moved on to other things. Okay. So the end, the end doesn't necessarily justify the means. Life is a journey of understanding what we were best created to do. It's a mixture of what we enjoy, what we are good at, what we excel in, uh, what can put food on the table because uh, let's get it, let's get it straight. I know most of you maybe are, you are trying to become uh, independent, take care of yourselves, and that's what you tell them. But in my life, I can say, life, I can say, Esther, just mute. Am I just mute? You can. Yeah, in my life, I can say faith has played a key role, man. Let me tell you, I would tell, I would pray, I would uh, do all sorts of prayers and go for all sorts of uh, church meetings, and I would tell God, if you ever open a door for me in the media, help me not to fail you, and help me to be available to speak to as many young people, especially in high school, to encourage them. Let me not be one of those guys who gets in and who will never give back. You know, you're always so busy. Let me be that kind of person that, uh, you know, has people who they mentor so that you are not there just for yourself, but you're there to help others get to where they need to get to. So there were a lot of prayers and, and declarations that I made uh, in that season, and I continue to make it there as well. Wow, 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 wow. Imagine you're just remaining with 15 minutes. Mbaka Minsky and then you could have come in. And you've already, like up IV, I'm getting so many things to write. My friend is just here beside me and he has written so many notes about faith. Nona Mandika Kusu confidence. Nona Mandika about putting an effort. Nona Mandika about envisioning. There's so much that, that we've already, we're already absorbing. And so now, how did Royal Media Services come? Like, you daily kwaje, uli to interview, and then uli uliskia aje, uliskia jigi jigi, uliskia aje, but your story. I mean, by the, by the time, in life you have to believe in yourself, okay? So I told you, um, at the very beginning, I was very unsure of what I could do in media, because remember, I didn't have a background in media when I was in university, I was not thinking about media. Me, I was a girl behind the scenes, actually. So when I began this journey uh, of 
getting into the media, it took me a long time before I actually got a chance to audition at, at Royal Media. Uh, so within that time, I was doing other things. I told you I was trying to run a business on the side. And, and life, maybe the other lesson I can mention is life is not straightforward. You know, some of you, you will finish your university and, and, and or your college or whatever you're doing, and those will open right away. Others, it can take a long time. And each of us is called to a different path. So I remember for me, it took me at least a year from when I resolved to get into media to really get any good auditions, any serious auditions. I would send letters, nobody responds, send emails, nobody responds. And I, and I understood that we, were, we are many people. And, and I think one of the challenges is that uh, when you write to a media house, uh, the media house receives 300 letters, 400, 1,000, 2,000. So sometimes I don't even blame the people on the other end. They are, they are dealing with too many uh, requests for work and for opportunities for interviews and so forth. But for me, what happened was that one time, now everyone around me knew I was trying to get into media, right? And it was something I was passionate about. And, and one time I was, uh, I remember an intern at our church, and a lot of it had to do with my church, coincidentally, <laughs> called me and told me that he was, he was doing his internship at Royal Media. He called me and told me, kuna kuna audition next week. Come on as a part of time, come through ujaribu. So those days meaning kwa suti moja, ilikuwa suti ya great. I remember I did the audition. The audition was for a kid's show, uh, a children's show actually, called Something Safari. And uh, I did the audition uh, the best I could, right? And remember, I've been rehearsing at home. When I look at the audition, I show, okay, we don't think you fit the part. This, you, you are, you are looking a bit too old to play a host of a kid's show. Lakini, Nimependa style yako ya kupresent. So, what I'm saying is, when yako, next time kuna audition ingine, maybe more suited towards you, na kushitua. So, I gave her my number. Me, I went on my way. I mean, I was, and her, I was sad. I had thought sasa milango stakuka. But, uh, nikasema, ya, eh, wacha niachie mungu. After about one month, she calls me again. She says, this way, Higa, yes. Uh, you remember you came for an audition? Oh, yes. Nikafikiria, oh, unataka ni chupa yo job. And I'm like, no, actually, we have another audition, another show that I think is better suited to you. Why don't you come for it? So I made my way to Citizen. Nimeva hiyo, shuti tu. Except I think nimeva disha shati. Nikapiga audition. And I had a really good feeling about it this time. Someone ilikuwa ni media mini. I haven't done any training. I was very horrible at the job at that time. I can tell you for free when I look back over my clips. But Nikama Iulikwatu Sikuyango. And within two days, they had called me back and told me, We want you to be the host. You and this lady called Diana Libiso. Can you start next week? I told them, Man, I can start even now if you want me to. And uh, that was in, uh, You know, when you've been waiting for an opportunity for a long time, you don't want the yeah. devil to get in the way. I had come for a meeting. Mr. Flaniel Kwamenita, presidential candidates were around there. So I'll come and eat and present your proposal to young people. So I'll come and eat and present your proposal to young people. I had three of my friends. I had three of my friends. Tutupande juu, alafu tutarudi ya takuwa. Nikasema apana, nimetafuta higa mezi tatu, ndo huyo hapa. Mina tegea dia malize phone call. I'm telling you, hiyo siku, ndo nilijua phone call ni mbefu. You know, you took like 17 minutes. Unandika two notes pole pole, and I'm like, zii, yeah. hii ni meshikungota. And in my head, I had always prepared what I'm supposed to tell you, tukipatana. So I started retrieving back the summary. Nikasema, ahoyo oh, nafaku sema, my name is Ben Hill. I'm 19 years old. I'm a public speaker and author who wants to be president. And I even remember the phone call I had with you. Ulishika tu dakika moja ni katema hizo mandeno araka araka. So now this time it was one on one. And what you're saying is very true. There's a difference when one is prepared and when one is not prepared. When you're prepared, unatakanga kakuja araka araka. Do you know the story? By the way, Ben Hini, you're sick in Ngoja. You know, that was a, a very serious phone call I was on. And that guy, now, you go to Ngoja. So when I got on I knew this was the Alafu naona boy fulani hapa, naona anataka kuniongelesha simkubu ana kafamili lakini simjui sana na hatoki. 
Hey, yeah. so I'm writing the guy the the notes. I've been waiting for those notes for some time. Uh, I'd forgotten about that. Actually, you know the power of patience. That one, you were patient. I, I applaud you. Let me go to my verse. Which is it? It is not a kind of school. My verse. It is not a school. My verse. Double breast. No, John, I'm going to double breast. So I'm going to say my verse. Ah, ah, ah. I'm going to make a funga. Let's go. Hey. Eh yeah, so hapo so hapo sasa nikaanza hiyo show the show was called Zinduka nikaichapa for around six mm-hmm. months and then show ikaisha so nikarudi mtaa the jobless tena but uh, within that time i had impressed some people so there was another mm-hmm. audition for a, a sports presenter on daybreak the morning show those days it was called power breakfast it used to have a mm-hmm. guy called Johnson Mwakazi yes Migatu Kiharas sasa yule Jimmy Gatu mwenye nilikuwa na serve kwa bank yeah. nikafanya audition nikaka kwa meza na yeye kama co-host <laughs> imagine wow 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 yani, yani nikaka hata sidhani alikuwa ananikumbuka nikamwambia Jimmy ni aje 3 years ago mimi nilikuwa na kuserve kwa band akasema ala nikamwambia <laughs> eh mimi nilikuwa nilikuwa pale katikati ni umitu wa se wengi ni umitu wa se wengi na day to day basis nakumbuki but mimi nilikuwa nakumbuka nilikuwa nimemuomba mlango ufunguke <laughs> Aku, aku, alijaribu lakini haikufaulu lakini now here we are we are working together and wow. i i made sure i made sure i learn as much as i can i try to understand as much as i can and within a short time i started doing stuff on the sports desk with ina Torome Tirike Michael Kinyi Anad Ndong Geoffrey Washira tukaingia hiyo sector tukapiga kazi tukapiga kazi tukapiga kazi wakati Lilian Muli alijoin nikaanza kusoma news na yeye by the way everything was always uh, miraculous let me tell you one thing about my life daddy every opportunity that has come my way most of the time it was not my opportunity first kuna msemu mwingine alikuwa na hiyo chance akaikata organizers wakatafuta msemu mwingine mimi ndio nilikuwa available na nika step up so wow. hii siku wow. na na ego ati kwa nini mulifikiria Benny Hinn kwanza kabla muniite ile job ya power breakfast ilitokelezea because mm-hmm. the guy who was there ali, aliboeka akajitoa you know uh, mm-hmm. many many opportunities that i've gotten i've gotten because the guy who was there got bored or felt it wasn't important or uh, even the day when uh, i started anchoring with Lilian Muli i remember The, the other colleagues of mine who are more senior and better placed to anchor with her were simply not at work that day they had all gone on different assignments so Lillian Muli is there she's doing her rehearsals she's about to launch this brand new show every friday and saturday on citizen tv and they need a sports guy to come and do the demo with her so that the bosses see what it looks like they look around they go around all the sports guys who are senior awako Nani yako area wahiga lakini wahiga hatoshi 9 o'clock hawezi lakini kuna mtu akasema tupe tu chance aende hapo apige hiyo demo acha tuone vile kitu itaka and you know i went and i stood there we did the thing with her by the time we were done i just had one producer saying mimi naenda kuambia wadosi tuanze hiyo na hawa wili vile wako wow 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 the 9 o'clock aanze and one week nice. later Lilian Muli debuted a new show called Citizen Weekend Friday Saturday that was back in the year 20 at uh, 2013 2014 and her co-anchor for sports was yours truly and that was the first time now I'm now I think it was 2013 2014 I'm trying to remember 2013 maze hiyo time nilikuwa class 7 sasa hiyo time ndo nilikuwa class 7 nakumbuka kuna geza nilikuwa na kuwatch hiyo time ya sports na nilikuwa nasema u jamani ongeanga kizungu vizuri you know that flow of language and i used to love it and i remember my dad has always insisted that we watch news has always insisted lazima muone news you know and so i used to, to love watching news most of the time with him and uh, even in class I was quick when i used to be asked who do you want to become i would say i want to become a president but before that i'd become a news anchor i want to be like lena skakai or higa moura joa geyo i knew the names of people who i really admired you know and uh, it's funny now that we've grown up and right now i'm here one on one with you asking you questions 
it feels like hey like you know the, the, the power of it is very visible and so i have a question like taking advantage where people really avoid yeah there's a lesson i've learned there about ego okay pride has made many people lose opportunities so where did you learn this thing about humility did you learn it from someone did you learn it from life experiences have you ever paid the cost for pride at some point about tell us about oh that's a good, that's a good point um i think i've always known that in this life whatever you do to others is more likely to happen to you okay i don't i don't mean that you should be just a uh, a step uh, in actually a stepping stone to, for others to get to their success but uh, i obviously as a, as a, as a young man who was serious about his faith i believe that the biblical principles are true the good samaritan will always get help from god and god blesses those who help the foreigners the widows and so forth the bible is very clear about that so i've always believed that one good turn deserves another um and i have seen that work in my life i'll tell you for example i remember when i had finished uh, that show called uh, zinduka and i was at home one of the ladies that i used to work with called me one day and that time she was not very senior now she's very senior and she told me niaje nasikia juzi nilikuwa meeting fulani na nilisikia wakikutaja ni kama wana consider ukupea chance urudi so wakikupigia form ni hivi say this say you'll do that say you'll do this na utakuwa sawa watakupea hiyo kazi okay sawa so I, i i said asking myself if i had not been kind to this lady if i had not been uh, uh, friendly to this lady then i i you know how would things be how would things be she would never have called me maybe i'll never be considered for this opportunity and maybe at this time let me pay tribute to one of my colleagues that have learned something very great from not that i've learned but i just admire because he has done a lot in his career uh, longer much longer than me and he uh, still maintains that you that closeness with everyone jeff koinange you all you all know him jkl jk live and on tv he has this character that's very you can almost think he's he's proud the way he presents you know i've heard people saying that but let me tell you I've walked into the office with Jeff sometimes in the morning. Me I'm going to do TV, him is going to do radio, his Hot 96 show. Jeff will greet everyone by name from the gate to the guards, to the cleaners who are there early, to the ladies at the reception. It doesn't matter who you are. He knows your name, he greets you. Jeff is 50, maybe almost 50 years. I don't know how old he is. Don't quote me. Maybe he's very young. I've been watching Jeff since I was a kid and I love the fact that he is very um just relational with people even if he is this high ranking news anchor and for me I learned a lesson no matter what position you are in, even if you get to be the president one day greet the cleaner know their name greet the watchman know their name greet everyone and inquire about how they are they are as important to your success as you are important to their success we are an ecosystem we are one family um and you never know that that cleaner that watchman that uh, guy at the gate that guy who you don't even notice what impact they could have in your life and the bible is full of examples of people servant girls who what 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 who saved kings or who condemned kings by their actions So uh, for some of you who will make money I'm happy for you God bless you but please treat people well you never know when you might need them uh, and when they might when they might need you uh, you know uh, but more importantly a good act today could pay off tomorrow you never know wow wahiga history ushafungusha tusakata hata tuko tumeka humility kwa poster I'm going to pay a lesson more on humility from this me I've, I've taken five points actually I've taken the first point on the power of faith the second point on networking the third point on being intentional the fourth one on humility and the fifth one on just being relational because there's a difference between being uh, humble and being relational not everyone who is humble is relational and so that one is is really really powerful wakiga that one is really really powerful and actually i'll take advantage under this atmosphere to request you join your story tutafutie jeff mazia kuja session sasa 
umeona kitu ambayo tunafanya mtumie link mwambie kuna vijana wanalia huko watu so on youtube i'm seeing 60 people maze are watching you and so these people need such wisdom msukume tu mwambie ta utamnunulia chai keki kdf yote akuje tu hii session now wahiga the last question yeah because i understand you also a family man and you also need to have time with your family so we won't keep you for so long so the last question yeah I want you to write two letters. A letter to your younger self in four lines and a letter to your future self. They were eager on 95. And a letter to your younger self. Which letters will you write? In four lines. Uh, am I supposed to pick one or do both? Both. Anza na kwanza hiyo ya younger self, alafu ingine. Alafu na tuingie sana statement. Ni kama ulinipea choice usikujua kama unataka nitague moja. Eh I need to my younger self. This is this is actually a good one and I recently did a presentation of what I wish I knew when I was in high school to uh Juja Juja Prep and and Juja High School. I was there last weekend to speak to the young people uh on the same. And I told them I gave them about 10 things I wish I knew when I was younger. Uh, one thing i wish i knew when i was younger i remember was i wish i knew that the friends that i thought were so important in my life when i was uh, a teenager i, I one, will never be important to me as an adult so i wish i had spent less time listening to them and spent more time developing myself and my skills uh, as i told you as a young person i i was not confident i was driven by the crowd by pressures and that sort of thing and i wish i had just really focused on building myself because these people who you idolize whether you're in high school or in university you think they are the most good looking most handsome most what then you realize 10 years from now uo mtu hata utamjua hata they have no impact on your life and that sort of thing so i wish i spent less time trying to fit in and i wish i spent more time trying to stand out and you know because you guys know how hard it is to get work out there you guys know how competitive the world has become and so if we spend our younger years really trying to stand out in in a way that will build our lives not stand out because when mkora i think that's one great thing um the other thing i would have told myself when i was younger is and i say this with respect i know money can money does very many important things okay so i'm not rubbishing money uh, i'm i'm able to talk to you guys on this laptop because i i could afford to buy the laptop and i have internet okay but i also realized that money for majority of the world will never be more than the needs okay so whatever stage of life you in even when you get a pay rise and a new job and a new something there's always more needs that comes after that money i think it's the curse of money the curse of money is that the more you have it the more you need it and the more you need it the, the less you get of it and so i realized to myself at a very young age that i must look for other things beyond money to satisfy me in my work things like motivation like what i'm doing here today speaking to young people let me focus on that even if it doesn't pay because that is a lifetime of impact and i'm chasing impact not not just wealth uh, i also realized that service to god should be a priority because if you're looking for the money to satisfy you I'll be honest with you I'm 37 now and I've seen a lot of rich people and very few of them actually look satisfied yes I know we say better to cry in a Range Rover I won't argue with you if that's your view and I know poverty has really uh, you know messed up Africa generally uh, I wish we had access to some of the social security that the west has but I also want to say this If you let money control you it will make you do things you never have imagined. I like what someone has written chase impact not money. Chase impact at the at the end of the day when I die I I don't want to die with five Range Rovers. I'll be honest with you guys. I don't mind a Range Rover if I get one praise to God or a Land Cruiser I actually like the Land Cruiser. But if I die knowing that I educated X number of students if I die knowing my talks motivated Benny Hinn and many others if i die knowing that there is a school somewhere that 
did something because of what I did. If I die knowing that there's an investigative piece I did that has changed Kenya or changed the sector, I think my life will have counted for something. So the second thing I'll tell myself is, you see that money you're chasing, even if you get it, it's never enough. Don't stop chasing for it, of course, but chase impact fast. Chase impact fast. Ask yourself when you're 95, what will that be? So one other thing that I also told, I would tell my a younger version of myself is, good things take time. Good things take time. I get young people coming to me all the time telling me I want to be a news anchor tomorrow. And I say, if I could tell you the journey that I've walked these last 12 years, you people who know me now, it's been a 12-year journey. Young people come to me and say, I want to be an, a news anchor tomorrow. And I ask them, beyond being a news anchor is easy. Anyone can sit and read a script. But most news anchors are very good in politics, are very good in business. What are you good at? What is your speciality? Uh, me, I don't know. I just want to read news. If you want to just want to read news, you're very easy to be fired. Because news readers are here today, gone tomorrow. There are people in this forum today. If we give you a camera and some training, you will be a better news reader than me. I kid you not. Because reading is like we all were taught how to read in school. So it's not just about reading news. It's about your ability to interrogate a particular topic until you become a master at it. And one of the reasons why I think citizen has done well is because we have great experts in various fields i, I can commend my colleague francis Gashuri. nobody knows politics like he does you know i can commend many of my colleagues i just don't want to take too much time they have stood out in experts as experts in their field fine you want to be a news anchor i will not discourage you from being one but what are you an expert of that when we sit and watch you reading news or when we sit and watch you reporting or whatever it is that you feel you're called to do we can say that this one is talented because of this. It's not just speaking good English. Speaking good English is not a, it's not a, a <laughs> something to be proud of. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, Wazungu uh, wakatufu So, ni ni lugha to turn that good English into a is impact using that good english or that good kiswahili or that good kikuyu or that good uya to champion for one cause or the other for me that is impact so those are the things i'll tell my younger self i'll tell them good things take time so be patient don't don't be frustrated if good things take longer than you thought i'll tell them to uh, hone their skill not to be so focused on fitting in with the cool groups and that sort of thing but to be focused on standing out i, I would tell them that uh, life is not a straight line. Sometimes when you're in school, you go from standard one, standard two, standard three, standard four. Life is not like that. Life, you can be, in life, you can be a standard one for, 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 for four years before you are promoted to standard two because of the challenges and complexities of life. What would I tell my older self? Oh, wow, now I don't know. I wish my older self could tell me what to do because my older self knows what I did right and what I did wrong. But this is what I pray. <laughs> uh, this is what I pray my older self will tell me. Stay consistent. Don't let opportunities change you negatively. And stick by the same rules that good things take time. Make sure you prioritize your family and your friends. Because sometimes money can change you and you can neglect your family, you can neglect your friends. And by friends, I mean people who really love you and care for you. Not just anyone who calls themselves a friend. Um, I would tell my older self that sometimes it's good to say no. It's important to learn when to say yes. Say yes to opportunities even if you are afraid. Say no to fear. Say yes to daring new things. This year, I joined the gym. I'm now on the fourth month. I've never been able to work out, but I said yes to working out for a better, healthier me in the future. But I've also said no to a few things, things that I was never able to say no to in the past. I hope that my older self will have perfected that part. Benin, let me stop there. Hey, Maze, ume to sort. Ume to sort. Wah, 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 wah. I think we shall take one question. 
Then we go to the 30 seconds last session. Uh, one question, any, any, the first yes, person have a question. question. You can either have put your mic on. Ask. Um, Wahiga Maura, since to many of us, you are our inspiration, our mentors. Who is your mentor or your greatest inspiration? And what do you look up to from him or her? Um, I, I don't have a mentor as in one person because I believe that human beings are ultimately flawed. Uh, and if you put too much faith in a human being, they will eventually let you down. What I have instead is I have mentors for different fields. Okay. So I, I, there are people I admire in media, both locally and internationally. There are people I admire in life for decisions they have made. I'll give you an example. Uh, I admire the life of Dr. Charles Muli, of the Muli Children's Family in Ukambani. Just Google about him. He has been so impactful in his life that a Hollywood producer came to Kenya and made a movie about his life. Is that not impact? That your job of rehabilitating street children in Ukambani and the wider areas has attracted the attention of Hollywood. And uh, the, the, the Muli family story is so big, I can't get into it right now. But I, I think Dr. Charles Muli is someone whose life stands out for me. Um, I, I admire... I admire politicians who are able to walk away from the, the pressure. I mean, I think people like uh, Kivuda Kibwana have stood out as people who have remained grounded, humble, and yet have risen to very high positions in academia, in civil society, in politics, you know, people like that. And yet when you meet them, they don't talk to you as if they own the whole world. They talk to you and make you feel as if you are a uh, 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 very close to them. These are people I admire. Uh, so I don't have one mentor. I'll be honest with you, Cairo, but I pick a lesson from everyone I meet. And so today, I can even pick a lesson from Benihin Walubengo. He's being very intentional about not just changing his perspective by calling people like me to speak, but changing a generation. And so Benihin can might be younger than me, but there is one thing he can mentor me on. Today, he has reminded me about the power of patience, how he waited for me. So, Cairo, feel free to have one or two mentors. Uh, for me, I just felt in life that I wanted to pick lessons from as many people as I can so that my success is made greater by the accumulation of positive attributes from as many people as possible. About 10 years ago, I had the chance to be a writer or a, a book that was interviewing CEOs. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I was mainly doing it for the money, but that experience of interviewing, I got to interview about eight CEOs. It was invaluable. I learned from people who, you know, we believe their lives are perfect. Some of them opened up to me. They shared with me their regrets. I remember one of them told me he regretted getting married late. Another one regretted getting married too early. So I realized, okay, so this thing called marriage is not the same for everyone. Another one told me he's still not satisfied yet with his success, and yet we believe he's successful. Another one told me that he believes in the 10,000 hour rule, that if you want to be an expert in anything, you must work at it for 10,000 hours. That's what they say in the world of sports. The greatest footballers, the greatest tennis players have played for at least 10,000 hours. That is when you can begin to call them an expert. That writing project that I was a part of opened me up to what you can learn from different human beings. They are not perfect. They have weaknesses. Even my, my bishop and my pastor, me, I only pick that which they are doing that's honorable. If they make a mistake out there, I mean, as a manga, with a positive attribute. Where Paul told us, follow me as I follow Christ. So that's how I handle mentorship. I pick the positive attributes of as many people as I meet. I reject the negative and I try and apply them to my life. Wow, 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 wow. Mazimina, conversation, it's a very powerful conversation. Because of time, I think we shall call you again, because I'm seeing guys have so many, so many questions. We shall just have a question and answer session. So for today, we shall take that question. Why he has given us so much wisdom, he is a family man. Let us not forget that. Let us also be uh, considerable. 
I'm seeing it's main party and in family rules maze uzamana msisa waiga na konga na msupa kwa hivyo lazima arudi kwa family na wanyiga I, I can take we normally have the last one, last one one, one last one i'm seeing there's a guy there's a guy wanted okay join mzoni aha uh-huh, go ahead i have a question um what would what Hello, would you advise to a first year student in journalism and mass communication so i just want to ask our higa My name is John. John, John, John Kidogo. Let Joy finish asking, then you'll ask. I was asking, what can, what okay, can you advise to a first year student in journalism? Am I clear? Yes, you are. Yeah, Joy. And John, ask you so that I, I, I just answer those two and we wrap up. John, go ahead and ask you. Okay, maybe just to ask uh, Waihiga. I wanted to ask, um, how how do you get to build that uh, your confidence because we, we, we ask or me personally i can say that i've been, I've been in spaces where i want to be confident i want to express how i feel but then i find myself overwhelmed by fear especially when when i'm in spaces where i feel like people know more than me or people are more experienced than i am so how do you get to build your confidence and uh, maybe stand out and uh, get confident or bold enough thank you i think yes, that if, if you can hear me um so let me start with you joy uh Is anyone speaking? Joy, let me start with you, right? You're a first year, that means uh, you will be graduating, we are in 2021, you'll be graduating in about 2025. First of all, let me tell you, the media space is changing at a hectic pace. Right now, if you speak to anyone working in any of the big media houses, the citizen standard uh, group the ntv whether kbc whatever it is right now the focus is on digital and a lot of digital media outfits have popped up kenyans.co.ke tuko uh, niaje pulse live uh, nairobi leo all that sort of thing if i were you and i'm in university right now i'll do a couple of things one i would make sure that in university i build my digital media profiles Journalists are no longer just people who read and write. Journalists are now influencers. The best paid journalists are influencers who have amassed enough following to be able to speak and really cause others to 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 follow them. So one I would make sure that like that you are building your you're not just spending time on TikTok or Instagram just enjoying yourself, but you're trying to understand how the platforms work because the journalists of the future must be able to speak to audiences in that space like that one two i would make sure i understand this thing called data journalism because the jobs right now are going to those who understand data journalism how do we use numbers to come up with patterns and can those patterns uh um help us to tell a story and that's the problem that we have right um so uh, sorry Just, just give me a minute just give me a minute if you can hear me well, so, uh, so that's what i'll tell you joy uh, i'll tell you to and one understand the digital space become an expert in it number two understand this thing called data journalism if they don't teach it in your school go online and learn how it works because it's so important and then number three network uh, and networking nowadays is not just meeting people in person networking is now more important on social media let me tell you there are people i respect right now who are younger than me i've never met them but they tweet they put posts on instagram they are either creative or they are uh, educational and they make me follow them 
And if a person like that comes looking for a job, it's so much easier. So if I was a first year student, build yourself, build your product, because now you don't have to wait for Citizen to air your content. You can actually have a YouTube channel, you can have a TikTok channel, you can have an Instagram channel where you can be broadcasting. And don't just think of you with a microphone like this. Let me tell you, bloggers are changing the scene. You've seen bloggers and all the things they are doing. Some are doing interior design, others are doing blogs on fashion, blogs on cars, blogs on life, blogs on relationship. And it is media houses now going out to look for them, not the other way around. It's, it's, in the past, it used to be you asking a media house, can you open a door for me? Unfortunately, or fortunately now, if you are good at what you do, the media house itself will come looking for you. So, Joy, I will tell you, don't just read what you're reading in class. It's not enough uh, for when you'll be looking for a job. Start researching media trends out there. What are young digital journalists doing out there in America? What are they doing out there in Europe? Begin to uh, acquaint yourself with the new trends so that by the time you're leaving school, you have built a, a digital following that is uh, so powerful that whatever media house you approach, should you choose to go that way, that media house has no choice but to listen to you because you are already an influencer. Look at Benny Hinn. I don't know what year Benny Hinn is in, but if Benny Hinn goes to a media house now with the kind of the things he's doing, making presentations to presidential candidates, what, 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 that's a media house that will take him seriously. So the work for you, Joy, begins today, not when you graduate with a CV walking around. That CV won't help you. It's all about content, and that content is what will make a difference. So that's the first thing I will tell you. Um, second, of, second of all, I think to John Joroge, and you raised a, a point about overcoming fear in a nutshell. And uh, this is what I'll tell you about fear. I love how Will Smith puts it. Fear is the biggest invisible barrier in many of our lives. I think the other invisible barriers include uh, uh, unforgiveness, uh, but I think fear is number one. And fear whispers in your ear that you can't make it, you don't deserve it, you're not worthy. And let me tell you, I walked that same path, uh, my brother. So you are not alone in this. How have I overcome fear? Let me put it to you this way. I have not overcome fear. I still battle with fear on a day-to-day -day basis. When I'm about to go on TV, when I'm about to go on radio, when I'm about to speak to a crowd, my heart still pounds. I'm still afraid. I'm still worried I'll say the wrong thing amongst other challenges. But this is what I know. One, I have learned how to walk through fear. The fear still remains. It's very much sitting on my head but it doesn't stop me. And I like what Will Smith said. Will Smith says, on the other side of your fear are such endless possibilities. If only you could just walk past it. On the other side of your fear is freedom. On the other side of your fear is the next level. And some of you will not be successful in life until you learn to face the fear head on. You don't run away from fear. fear Fear is faced head on, fear is confronted. You may not overcome it, but you fight through it. And on the other side is freedom. A few things that I try and do to overcome fear. One, whenever I'm scared of something, I try to do it more. Am I afraid of public speaking? I ask for more public speaking opportunities. Am I afraid of this? I ask for it more. Um, and I find that it gets easier as we go along uh, because you then become more courageous, more confident. Uh, the second thing is I have a fear challenge. Every year I ask myself, in addition to my New Year's resolutions, I have a fear resolution. That one thing that I have been terrified of for a long time, can I try and face it in 2021? So by the end of 2021, when I, when I write down what I feel I've achieved in 2021, is there something that I was afraid of previously that I have been able to do? And when I think about it over the last two years, from public speaking, I remember major public speaking events to even things that you thought you were simply incapable of. I remember when I was a sports journalist, I'd been doing sports for about seven years. And so I um, 
knew that I, I, I can be a good news anchor for main news, but I was afraid. And I remember that day when I sat on a table and I started reading the main news, a part of that fear just left me. And I felt like I have overcome a fear factor. So one fear challenge I would challenge all of you before 2021 ends, is there something you've been afraid of? Telling someone something that you needed to tell them, telling them no, or saying yes to an opportunity that you've always been nervous about. Uh, some of you are afraid of heights. In 2021, I challenge you, go and try and climb a small mountain and, and tell yourself, I will fight through this fear. Men and women who have learned to overcome fear, you cannot stop them. You know, in politics, when, when you hear people saying, what they're basically saying is, there are only two or three people who do not fear, meaning the rest are operating on fear. And when you're fearful, you make many mistakes. I am always challenging myself. This thing that you fear, Wahiga, face it head on. What's the worst thing that will happen? Face it head on, overcome it, and move on to the next. And I'm always asking myself and challenging myself, what is this thing that I fear? Let me go for it. Who knows? What if I overcome it? Could I change the world? I, I don't know how to put it. And finally, another way to beat fear, finally, John Deroge, prepare yourself for it. Uh, usually when I'm in a room and there are people taking questions, I, if I feel I might lose my thoughts, I scribble down points. I think in advance. But every time I'm in a forum of influential people, I want to make sure they remember that I was there. So I want to contribute something that makes a difference uh, to them. When they go home, I want them to think, there was a young man called Wahiga in that room. He said something that blew my mind. Next time I have an opportunity, I want to call that young man. So you tackle fear head on, man. If you overcome fear at a young age, the world is not, it, it, there's nothing in the world that can stand in you. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Me, there, there is just one thing that really stands out, you know, that you, you have the wisdom from God. These, these are not things that are taught in school. And I'll just add you keep on sharpening, Mazi, keep on sharpening. I have, I have so many questions for you, but we shall not ask you those questions today. We shall create some other time. Now, Kumbuki, but in Tumaki, Kiat, Mesema, Mazu, Tafti, Jeff, Tafadan, to Molise, and Maso, and Kusio, relations, the power of relationships, the power of relationships in greatness. So, thank you so much, Maze. You've answered the questions effectively. I know many guys have many questions, but pardon us for today. Pardon us. Pardon us for today. There's someone behind me. Pardon us for today. Actually, uh, I've remembered one thing the, about, about the power of relations. Let me say it very quickly. There was once a young man who, just like Benny Hinn, he kept bothering me about meeting. And one day, just like the way I've, I've, I've been able to come to this meeting, I, uh, I started to meet that young man. He came with his friends to, to the offices at Citizen. Uh, and of course, you know, there they don't allow you in if you don't have a gate pass or anything. So he called me up. And we went and we had a, we went across to the restaurant. There's a restaurant not far from our, our, our office. And I had a bit of money on me. I bought him and his friends some chips. And I talked to them about media, the way we are talking here today and that sort of thing. Do you know something? Of those two young men, one of them, after about a year, joined Citizen on his own. I don't even know how he got in, okay? And within two years, he became my boss on one of my shows. This is a young man who I bought lunch at a hotel across the road from my office, becoming my boss. Can you imagine if I had treated him badly? How miserable wow. he would have made life for me. But because I treated him with dignity, even though he did not know me, when he became my boss, he really pushed and opened doors for me. And till today, we remain the best of friends. I just wanted to throw that wow. in even as we, as we wrap this up. Thank you so much. Hey, what? You know, I feel like we can sit down for a whole drive just with you. And I, I know that you and me and I are diary to do list. One day I'll have a drive with Wahiga. We just go to Bungoma or uh, Masai Mara. I just ask you many questions. You know, thank you so much. Now, to the 30 seconds training, the 30 seconds we normally do a speech. 
We choose three people randomly. We just set a question. We also give our guests to try. I also try as the host. And so, yeah, here we are. So the question for today is, you're in a country that has just faced a civil war. You have been elected as the president. You have been given 30 seconds to give a maiden speech. Your opponents are seated there. The citizens are seated there. In the biggest stadium in the world, you're supposed to give a speech that has three components, hope, vision, and leadership. Hope because people have fought. Vision because they're almost giving up. Leadership so that you can give direction. So 30 seconds begin. Now, the first person will do it. The second person, the third person, then Wahiga, then Benin. So who wants to try today? I've seen Brian had already said, Brian Lepish had Alkwasha Sema and Daku Jaribu. Who else? Someone different who has never tried? Will you please uh, repeat the, the question? Some uh, some of us have not had the question well. I would like if you'll uh, repeat the question so that we can... Okay, okay, okay. The question is, the question is, you have been elected as a president in a country that, that has just faced a civil war. And now, you're there, you've been given an opportunity to become the president. Your opponents are citizens who never voted for you are seated there, and those who also supported you are seated there. And you're supposed to give, within 30 seconds, a speech that is filled with hope, vision, and leadership. 30 seconds speech. Andrew Musioka has spoken before. Let's give an opportunity to those who have never tried. Someone has said they want to try. Ryan has said, aha. Uh-huh. Brian Lepish, who else? Who has never spoken? Now, uh, a lady, a lady. A lady, a lady, any lady who wants to try. Okay, there is no lady, so Honorable Reinhard Atela. Nice one. So let's begin with Ryan. Okay, can you hear me well? Yes, you can. Go ahead. Hope everybody is hearing me well. Okay, uh, now it is time to start. Uh, good, good morning to everyone. Hope, my hope is that the day of today, the Lord has blessed us all with the breath of life so that we can be, rebuild our country. I know we have lost a lot of lives, and I hope that this is a new beginning that will unite everybody. Me, as your leader, will, will continue to connect with every lost person who is feeling lost because of the war. And I see a vision of the young people leading us into a better future after we all continue, after we continue with this rebuilding of our nation. I hope that we will be able to build this country from the ashes and I hope that the days coming will be, a, will be days of happiness, will be days of learning and will be days where we will all live together in harmony. Thank you. Nice, nice, nice trial, Ryan. Mazi, it's your first time, but now Zai Bonga, baby, you, you may try Kabisa. I've gotten some good flow there. That is nice, that is nice. Let us go to the next person, uh, Brian Lepish. Hello, Kenyans. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank God. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, let's start again. Ah, it seems Brian is not ready. Honorable Reynard. I, I can try. Can I try? Yeah, yeah that, that lady will go next. Let Honorable Reynard try. Fellow countrymen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for honoring me, honoring me with this opportunity to serve you as the president of this great country. Our past has been bleak, but our future is full of hope and expectation. A hope that is built on the fact that we know we have a shared culture and a shared integrity. Knowing where we are coming from, we can both predict where we are going to. Thank you very much for having the trust in my leadership. And I choose today to stand on this platform to declare the future will be steered not only by me, but together with all the 40 million people of this country. Thank you and God bless our country. 
Eh hey, nice one. Honorable Brain admin na kukampania yeah, mazee. Right. Nitafuta nitakupiga strategy tutakutengenezea merchandise. <laughs> Now next one uh, the, the lady wanted to give it a try. You can go ahead. Yes, let me try. So a river, a river can never flow unless it's connected with its source and the end. Well, all of us we've seen where we've come from with all the hurdles and with all the challenges that comes with it. But for me even in these tough times I sat down and I saw where we as a nation we are going to end up and I believe and I've prayed and I've seen that we have a better future. The end is something I've not only seen but I've tasted. And let me assure you as a nation we are going to go far. Yes me as your president Wangoi Maina I assure you that everything is going to be okay. May God bless you. Hey wow 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 Nice. Maze mnaivisha hii kitu bana. Hii kitu mnaivisha usiku na mcha. Nataka watu wapige hivyo dizi. Siku inakuja wenye tu aiga ameongelea preparation. Maze tupige huo manzi makofi. Penye huko tu weka moto hapo chini na, lakini tunge sio mesimu. You know, guys are trying it's the first time wahiga some of these people have never spoken. So now we now want to go to wahiga then ongo alafu tufunge leo lakini before that there is a young man who really wants to speak before you are eager he has always admired you he's called andrew musioka andrew musioka so upige hiki kitu bana you uko na 15 seconds jumai ongea 15 skuma hiki kitu daddy pain one about her to show and remind you of your pain but they are to show you showed up to the war and the fact that you citizens provide a hope and a hope Andrew Andrew you have network issues Andrew you have network issues we can't hear you clearly uh is it done by uh english alone or rather you prefer english rather you also pre- uh, prefer swahili you can try swahili then we could now go to aiga and close the session because it's almost 10 pm okay thank you uh, wananchi wenzangu na viongozi wote waliofika katika maeneo haya siku ya leo tumekusanyika kwa minajili tunaona kesho ya nchi yetu kumbuka kwamba kesho ya nchi yetu uh, na muondoko wa nchi yetu unajengwa miongoni mwetu nguvu tunazo sisi la msingi na la muhimu ni kuweka utafauti wetu kando na kuangalia ni kipi ambacho tunakiazamia na kuatamia mambo mazuri kusudi tu nchi yetu isisalie sehemu moja lakini tuweze kusonga mimi kama rais wenu nina jukumu kuchukua na kuongoza wote kwa hali iliyo sawa asante nice nice you know there is nobody who has ever given a speech in in swahili in these sessions maze a ah, rais wa bana magufuli atakufa bado wewe uko baba and you know there is no orator wa kiswahili yeah, kenya yeah, okay. hakuna le hey, maze hakuna baze We, we put take up your space daddy bigger speech ya Kiswahili watu wasikie now we want to go to Ahiga and then I'll, I'll, I'll close in maze nimeshaka connect notes zenyu nyi what is i so nataka nikaa niko na mwisho so Ahiga i know you've ever wanted to be president you've ever told me that story now assume you're the president how would you have done that speech in 30 seconds Uh, I feel a bit intimidated now uh, some some of the people who spoke here spoke very well um but this is this is what I, and I don't want to be president maybe there's a time I thought I wanted to but hiyo kazi ni ngumu acha wengine wakombane nayo but this is what I'll say my fellow Kenyans I know the times have been tough I don't stand here today as a politician giving you lies so that you can choose you know my side or vote for me I stand here today as your fellow countryman I stand here today as a person who Uh, and your taxes and thus i need to tell you the truth the future may not be easy but the team that i have put in place will work together to ensure that we have sustainable growth for a better future the country has been going in the wrong direction for a very long time what we are trying to do right now is to move the ship to face the right direction so that your children and your great grandchildren will enjoy the prosperity that the original kenya was meant to be So work with me it will not be easy but I believe you have what it takes because you are great people and I stand here today to tell you that I will do my very best as a leader so help me god 
to ensure that Kenya becomes the greatest nation, not just in East Africa, but across Africa and around the world. Asante Nisan. Wow, wow, wow. Hii tungekupea tupigie hiki makofi bana. Fungueni microphone. Hapo hapo hiki mzee unaua. Hii kitu si nini peke yake. Mambo ya sasa na hata wengine. Hii mke wanagasa mimi ni mimi ni kuwapea na wapea kamera. Mzee mnanipatia mnanipea pressure basi. Si mfunge microphone nifunge sasa. Wow. Funga funga rada. <laughs> you know one day I'll be a president so let me assume I'm standing in a stadium and I want to give this speech and my eyes are closed because I see myself in a stadium someday where there is peace there is war and where there is war there is peace but in the war there are so many lessons they say a wound leaves a scar and the scar leaves a story that says I can survive our country has survived But are there scars that you've learned from? Yes, there are scars that you've learned from as a country. We cannot neither give the mistakes or credits to anyone, but we have our own country. They say a powerful soldier is a soldier that comes with a wound on the chest, not on the back. We are going to take the wounds of our country by taking responsibility, by believing in the power of us within us. In the words of Martha Teresa, she said that if everyone swept the doorstep of their houses then our country will be powerful now therefore for our country to be powerful we all need to hold our hands and work together there is no opposition there is no central government we are the government we are the people who are going to heal our nation we are the people who are going to bring reinvention we are the people who are going to bring rediscovery we are the people who are going to reclaim back the glory we have not yet lost we have just begun if you are to ask me if a blind man would have asked you what can i remember you for then it is only impact our role as citizens is to impact and impact let us preach peace let us preach love because in peace and love there is prosperity thank you my great nation wow wewe wewe utakuwa president as spokesperson <laughs> wow hey maze i've seen myself in that stadium thank you so much wahiga maze for showing up we want to tell you a story and we want to pray for you we know many times you're the one who prays for people but as young people we want to pray for you today that god will give you the grace that in the next 40 years we shall still study you in books we shall still remember you we shall quote you we shall we shall say we shall use your concepts to to teach people in schools I I want to quote you in my speeches. I want to quote how you spoke, how you breathed, how you you are you're playing with intonation. And therefore we want to pray for grace for you to increase. Grace for increase, that's specific prayer. So I'll tell you a story by Tila Perry. When Tila Perry was launching his 330 acre studio, he gave this story and said that in his community, women used to be beaten every day by their husbands. Therefore every Friday they would gather, tell each other stories and they would laugh at how they are beaten. They took it as fun. They knew that this is our moment for us to forget all our pain. So one day this guy is just walking and he's, as he's going back home, a blind man is across the road shouting someone help me cross someone help me cross the road and no one is helping this blind old man then this guy crosses the road and holds this man by the hand and helps him to cross the road and then as he does as he do as, as he immediately helps this man cross the road the old man tells him i'm now okay i'm good to go and from that day onwards taylor perry learned one thing that there are people who only need your hand to help them cross the road and they'll be fine there's someone who has texted me and told me they want to give their lives to Christ because you showed up in this session you've helped them cross the road this is the biggest prayer we can give you father Amen. we thank you because Amen. of wahiga we thank you because of his life his giftings his abilities his opportunities as young people we have silver nor gold to give him but you listen to the prayers of your children and therefore we pray as young men in our generation may you bless him may you give him grace for increase May you give him relevance 
across all generations our fathers shall listen to him his generation his age bracket shall listen to him our generation shall listen to him he will never ever lose relevance we pray for that gift may his gift be relevant across all generations may he be quoted in nations may he be quoted across generations may he be massive we pray for a generational influence in his life oh lord and even for his family lord may you keep him safe may you give him more life we thank you because of this great man in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Nimekuombea sana kwa Amen. 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 Nimekuombea kwa Benjamin Amen. 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 Once you have that figured out nothing is impossible before you. So my quote yeah. for you is may you seek wisdom and understanding because those are the tenets that build great men and great women. That is what made Solomon who he is, that is what made King David still uh, worshiped pretty much in Israel. So many years later in Abraham there was a wisdom and an understanding that they had. May each of you get wisdom and understanding to know how the world works. how god works and what part you are supposed to play god bless you all in jesus name we pray wow amen 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 wait come and bye go to the family amen no in the request yet you have to wake up moyo tutaonana mazi thank you thank you guys zigizaga